Hi everyone, this video is a case study on my newest completed corset, which I like to call the Disco Armadillo. Um, it's a PVC ribbon corset, as I've never seen an actual ribbon corset made from PVC before. I'm sure they must exist somewhere, but I've never seen one, and so I wanted to see if it was possible. And so I'm going to show you this from all angles, tell you a little bit about the construction, and then uh, show you all the parts of it. So here's the front. Side, back, and the other side. So here's a disco armadillo laying as flat as it's going to get anyway. And what it's made from is actually this um, 1.5 inch wide PVC ribbon or trim. And this is just supposed to be some sort of binding or something. It is. Um, rights brand i don't know if you could see that it was really frustrating to work with this stuff actually because it's stretchy and yet unyielding um you can see that it bends that way but when it's on its side it really does not want to bend at all unless uh you want to end up with say wrinkles or um strange kind of stretch or stress marks on the other side since this is foiled then any sort of abrasion that happens um, onto it is going to leave little marks. Additionally, it's not a self-healing fabric, so anytime I put a pin through it, then it would leave a permanent mark. That will not heal, and you will see that forever. So um, when I was pinning this, trying to keep everything together, I had to pin well away from the seam line uh, just to make sure that the pin pricks wouldn't actually be seen afterwards, and I used my thinnest pins possible. The Another thing that made my life a whole lot easier is this Teflon foot and really it was worth the investment. Um, for comparison this is a normal foot made out of metal. This is a Teflon foot, extremely slippery. Yes, it's very slippery. It won't grip onto um, the PVC or anything that you're sewing so it will be able to slide underneath. Another weird thing that I ran into was that um, the feed dogs underneath um, the foot actually left permanent marks or scars on the back of my ribbon so what I just did was uh, put a strip of masking tape under the area that I was going to sew and that protected uh, this from being um, gripped or torn by the feed dogs and then after I sewed the seam I would just tear off the tape afterwards. Alright and if I open it up then you can see that I actually did line this in coutille to help prevent it from stretching too much um, because the PVC does stretch over time and uh, it has worked a little bit but as you can see I just did one single panel for it instead of um, the multiple ribbon panels which I don't know would have worked that much better or anything. Um, but the cool thing about this is that it's not as hot or sticky or sweaty as I expected PVC to actually be. Um, probably because it is individual ribbons here and it's lined in the cotton so it doesn't stick to my skin or anything. Um, so it actually is quite airy. For the actual construction of it, what I did was I went on to Sydney Eileen's um, tutorial page and I looked at her pattern that she had drafted for her um, ribbon cincher. Now her tutorial isn't really on the pattern drafting, it's actually more on how to construct a ribbon corset, but um, I just kind of eyeballed her um, pattern and kind of um, dove in and tried to make the same general shape of panels um, to my measurements. So here are the basic ribbon panels and then there are just other um, vertical panels that's the same width as this stuff, 1.5 inches on the front, the middle and the back. So you can see here that um, to make sure that the ribbon was going to cover all parts of it, I just laid it down and traced it and then just made sure that it was overlapping. And then afterwards, um, what I had done was colored it, um, each panel basically a different color to keep myself organized and make sure that I didn't cut um, two of one piece and none of another or anything like that. And I also uh, did it on the other side so that I would be able to mirror the corset on the other side. 
Now the actual construction of the corset, I didn't take a lot of pictures for this process, but if you follow Sydney Eileen's tutorial online, it's pretty much straightforward. And back to the corset itself, um, generally speaking, ribbon corsets do not have waist tapes in them um, because basically you already have horizontal panels of ribbon running through it that kind of works sort of like a waist tape anyways. Um, and I put binding on just the vertical panels on the front, the sides, and the back just to keep the busk and the boning in. Um, all I did was take a little bit of this leftover stuff and sewed it once over like so. And then I just flipped it around the back, top stitched it, and then on the back I simply cut it. The busk I used was pretty small, it's about 9 inches high, it's meant for cinchers, and it is fairly flexible, however the PVC, there are two layers, or actually three layers of uh, PVC in this busk area here, and <laughs> strangely enough that keeps it pretty flat because this stuff really does not want to yield. Um, for bones, there are actually a total of eight bones in this entire corset. Um, there are flats on either side of the grommets here, and then there are another two bones additionally on each of these uh, side panels, and that pretty much helps it keep its shape. However, um, I have a picture of the corset standing up by itself, uh, even without any bones on it. It wants to stand up by itself. And for the grommets, I used um, two-part size double zero grommets finished in silver. And this is actually from my new machine. I have a C-Step 2 now, and it is absolutely a godsend when it came to this corset here. Um, it has self-piercing grommets, so it goes right through. Now, because it has self-piercing grommets, then you might want to put a spot of fray check or something um, before you actually pierce the the material. However, because this is PVC, it doesn't need, it doesn't fray, so I didn't need to do that. Um, but I did sandwich a piece of heavy duty canvas between the um, back panels here, just to make sure that the grommets aren't going to rip out because PVC, once again, does stretch. And for the laces, I just used purple paracord. Uh, I thought it just brought out the nice purple undertones in the PVC itself, and it also matched the purple contrast stitching that I did on the vertical panels of this corset. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this and that you learned something from it. And you guys probably know the drill by now. Like it if you like it and post a comment down below if you want to say something. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye.